Hey guys, it's Lou here. And Chris. And this time we decided we don't want to start this video the way we started our last video because mm -hmm. you guys deserve something different. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, we're going to start with the song. Yeah. I stay. That's all for right now. <laughs> let's be real. I don't want you to get all confused and think that this is my debut because it's like my. <laughs> can't help it man i'm a very talented person so if you want to hear more of that subscribe and you're gonna see me go in like excuse me while i turn up <laughs> okay <laughs> so for today's lesson we will talk about jesus the big homie the god or, or the son of okay the son of god the son of god Good guy. So, we're going to be starting in. What's the scripture? Hit me with the scripture. So, John 2, 1 through 12. Yeah. All right. So, we got a story for you. And we're not going to go and read this whole story because ain't nobody got time for that. So, we're just going <laughs> to tell you what the story's about. All right. So, we got the story. So, we got Jesus, Mary, his disciples, the disciples, are at a wedding. Okay, so they like turning up, right? And the wine at the wedding goes out. You know, everybody got drunk off of that stuff, and it just, you know, it went, it went out. So Mary approaches Jesus, and she's like, "Hey, homie, do me a favor. Refill that." She's very aware that he got miracles, and like, you know, he's a very talented human being. And so she asks her son to, you know, help him out and refill the wine at the wedding. So his first response in this in this uh, story here is kind of funny because he's like, no, why? No, I'm a Jesus and that's what I'm going to use my miracles on? Hey, come on, give me something more challenging, you know? But of course, it's his mom. So he like switches up and he's like, all right, I'm going to go refill the wine. <clears throat> so, right, so at this time, it's customary that when you serve alcohol, at a place, uh, uh, like somebody's event or something, you're supposed to get approval from like the host of the party or like the head of the household and make sure that they like the wine or like the alcohol or whatever. So Jesus like sends off this wine to the head of the household to like see if he likes the wine or whatever. He don't go himself, like he sends somebody else. And so the head of household is like, what, this wine is amazing. But what's weird about it is that another thing that they did at the time, which I think people probably still do, is they serve the good wine first or the good alcohol first and then, like, when everybody's drunk and doesn't know what the heck they're drinking, they serve the, the crap. So the head of the household is like, what's up? This wine's amazing. It's even better than what we already served. It's like, what's going on? That's dope. Whatever. Long story short, Jesus goes back, sits with his disciples, and he just, like, you know, keeps pushing. He just, whatever. All right, so why are we telling you this story? Like, who cares? All right? So the reason why we're telling you this story is because we want your opinion on the personality, the character traits of this man, right? Because we read the story and we just saw like a lot, like a lot of things popped out in that story that said a lot to us about who Jesus is. So first we see his humanity because he being the son of God, right? And like the all powerful Wizard of Oz, he still <laughs> listened to his moms. You see? So even though technically, like, if you want to look at it like that, technically it's like he's like above his mom in a sense, whatever. But still, because it's his mom, he did what she told him to do out of respect because he was a son. And, you know what I mean? So I think that's, that's pretty dope for him to do all right and another thing the other thing we see is his um is that he's humble he's a humble dude okay because he obviously knew that he was gonna give them pop and wine he's he's jesus obviously he's he's gonna give him good wine so what he could have did was just like not even bother with the head of the household and be like yo 
I gave you what I gave you. Be grateful. But instead, he went ahead with the laws of the land and had homie check it out and approve. And that's, that's dope. And also, he didn't even ask for the credit. After the head of the household saw that the wine was amazing, he didn't even like step out through the crowd and be like, I did that yep. with my hands and my mind. No. Yep. Instead, he was just like, I'm going to just kick back. I'm going to sit with my people and whatever. Like, I, I just whatever, you know? So that's, that's awesome, too. And then also, lastly, what we saw, maybe you did not see, is that he passed no judgment. And I think that's pretty dope. So here we are. This is the son of God, right? And you got a bunch of drunken people in front of you getting jiggy with it and drunk committing sins and he didn't even like jump up to be like hold up like no to all of this mm -hmm. instead he was just like here's your wine whatevs and he just like sat down and just chilled with his people so obviously to me the way i look at it jesus was a really chill dude like he really was just he really was not as crazy as like people make him out to be right like, you know he's not he was, pressing the issue how humans and Christians are pressing, press, press, no, <laughs> pressing some issues, you know? Yeah. You know, because everybody has this picture that like, God is like this, this like vengeful, like hateful dude that just like sits up there. Discipline. Right. Like zapping you, you off to. the earth or something. Like, I don't know. <laughs> whatever. Just like, yeah, you said pew, you said pew. But that's not what he's doing, obviously. You know, he sent his son, his son is sitting there watching you sin, and he didn't even do nothing. Like, he was like, whatever. He provided the wine. Exactly. He gave the choice. He yeah. Died. He gives you your choice. Exactly. He gives you your choice. You know what I mean? He just lets you do you. Because at this point, you know right from wrong. You grown, whatever. And at this point, he just, you know, if he didn't provide the wine, obviously he would have saved a bunch of people from committing further sins. But that wouldn't have been because of them. That would have been because of him. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So he just was like, forget and, it, whatever. And he had just got there. So he already knows nobody really knows he's the Messiah. Yeah. So he's That's like, true. you know what? Nobody knows, you know, what I came for. They don't know my message yet, okay? I'm showing sure faith here, but they don't know who I am. So who am I to be like, oh, condemn you, you and you, you know? Pew, pew. When I'm just, I just got here. And look, he understood. And that's a human trait. Humans understand other humans. Jesus under understood humans. Yeah. And that makes him a human person. About who he is. So we want you to tell us what you got from that story. Like, mm -hmm. who do you get? What do you get from that? Who could he be as a person? And I guess now, why are we telling you that part? So I guess we wanted you to understand who he is. Because in a way, he's not so different from us. You know? So we can talk a little bit more about who we are. Um, so I personally, even though I am a cynic, sorry, would like to believe that for most of mankind, we try to be good people, right? Maybe you would. Okay, so we try to be good people, or at least the best version of ourselves that we possibly could be for ourselves and also for others, you know? So we don't like shoot and like kill and steal and whatever and blah, 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 blah. But for most of us, the reason why we don't do that is because of the laws of the land. So you don't kill, you don't steal, because you don't want to go to jail. Yeah. Cool. Well, for Christians, our like moral compass is, you know, Christianity. It's like, it's Jesus or whatever. And for you guys, it's government. However, me and Chris were sitting there thinking, and we're like, well, the laws of the land came from a church. So, in the end, you still following the rules of Jesus. Pretty and much. Church? I mean, they didn't write themselves. And that's obviously not something we're making up, because we all learned that, like, in school, growing up. Mm -hmm. So, you know I'm not lying. Or whatever. So, I was talking to this girl one time, right? And I'm telling her, I'm like, hey, you know, if you're not religious... Like, why be good? You know, like why? And I'm not saying she should be a horrible person, but I'm just saying, but but for why? You know? So she's like, okay. you know, do I have to be religious to be good? And I'm like, no. But I mean, again, like I just explained, you know, for us, it's Jesus. And then for you, it's government, which comes from church. So then in the end, you're still being kind of religious. And you don't even realize 
realize that you're being religious. So that's kind of crazy if you think about it. And then to take that idea further, so a lot of people are like, a lot of people like to bring up Matthew, what is it, 10, uh, 33? Yeah. yeah. 10, so in, in that verse it says um, something along the lines of that if you deny Jesus, like he'll deny you before his father, which is in heaven, right. or whatever. And so there are a lot of people are like, okay, so if I'm such a good person, like why is it that I'm like, damn the hell, because that's when like heaven and hell come into play, you know? And they're like, what? Me and you both good, and I'm going to hell just because like I don't know about Jesus. So I was talking to Chris, we were just chopping it up, and I'm like, it kind of does make sense. I mean, let's just be realistic here. Like, let's not get so deep with it, but let's just talk like person to person, all right? Mm-hmm. So scenario one, we on a train, right? Chris is on a train with one of you guys, right? You got blue hair, gauges, you dress like Lou, you follow her on Facebook or whatever. You know what I mean? She sees you and she's like, yo, you know Lou? You know? And at that moment, you're like, who's she? <laughs> Bump that shit, you know? And you basically like deny my existence. Do you think that the next words out of Chris's mouth would be, so you want to come to her place for some pizza and some beer? You know? It just doesn't make any logical sense. You get my point? So I'm sitting here trying to figure out, right? If you deny God pretty much the entire time you're here on earth, then why is it that when you die, you want to go sit with him? You just say you don't even know him. You don't believe he exists. So then in the end, when we're all like being divided and stuff, why do you want to go with Jesus? You don't know him. You don't like him. So, so maybe you guys can answer that for us. Yeah. Because that's, that's backwards. And ask yourself, did you actually try to get to know him? There you go. There you go. Because in the end, if you think about it, we're all just trying to be as good as we can be. Mm-hmm. Everybody thinks that you become a Christian, you're like on the straight and narrow, mm-hmm. and you make no mistakes or whatever. But I, I mean, we're human. We obviously make mistakes. Yeah. We obviously are going to sin. It's just, it's, it's inevitable, you know? Mm-hmm. So if all he's asking is that you try, which me and you do anyway, Christian, non-Christian, we try anyway. And the only difference between heaven and hell is acknowledging his existence. I mean, is it really worth it to not acknowledge his existence? When in the end, we're leading the same lives anyway? Exactly. Yeah, so basically, just be honest with yourself. You know, even if you don't want to write back to us, you don't want to tell us what you think, just in your head, look, go in that bathroom, look at yourself in the mirror, and ask yourself, am I being honest with myself? Exactly. And honestly, this is our, this channel is really just, it's open for conversation, you know, like, it's open mm-hmm. criticism as well, I mean constructive criticism so by all means comment and actually answer the question why are you so against religion help us understand help us understand you yeah and until then this is just a thought from, from the, the opinionated, opinionated.